Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and in this video, I'm going to take a little bit more time and demonstrate the more demonstrable features that are available in our ClickSense release, June 2020. And the first one I want to cover is our ClickSense desktop authentication against our software as a service offerings or cloud-based deployments. So for those of you who are aware, ClickSense Desktop is still available. However, you need to authenticate against a enterprise server, in this case, if it's installed on Windows. And you do that by setting up an authentication link within the management console. Well, we've now added that capability to our cloud-based deployments and software as a service offering. So the way you do that is you would go into your profile menu. In this case here, I'm on ClickSense Business. Select Settings, and you'll see there's a button here to authenticate your desktop. So when you click this, it's going to prompt you to execute ClickSense Browser, which is the executable that is installed with ClickSense Desktop. And we click that, and it'll take a few seconds to basically display the splash screen and then provide you with the authentication link within the prompt. And there it is. And you can see Authenticate Against This Enterprise or Business Server. So we click that button, and then basically brings a login screen Put in your credentials and click login. And now the user could use ClickSense Desktop like they have possibly in the past. Okay, if somebody wants to um, remove this authentication here, you can go to the menu and just log out. And then here you would just delete the authentication here and then you would require a new authentication link. Okay, so the next one I want to quickly demonstrate is the ability to export stories to PDF. Now, why this is new is because now it's available within cloud-based deployments and software as a service deployments. So let me open up this app here. And this app has a particular story in it. Now, this is a shameless plug for my new webinar series called Do More with Click for Beginners and Beyond. Next one, June 18th. Hope to see you there. But anyway, <laughs> I basically use this as a presentation material uh, to kick off the webinar. And in this particular instance here, I'm just going to select from the menu, and you'll see we have a download story as PDF option. Select that, and it'll generate a PDF of your story. Okay, nice little addition to our software as a service and cloud-based deployments. Okay, so the next couple of things I want to demonstrate are our new visualization enhancements. First one being within our straight table and pivot table, and that simply is the ability to highlight a row when you hover over it with your mouse, as you see here in the straight table as well as in the pivot table. And that's basically an option within the styling settings underneath presentation. And you can see here we have a button for highlight rows on hover. So let's just change our hover color to black and our font color to yellow. And you can see the difference here. Okay, fairly simple. And then we also allow you to change the size of the scroll bar. So small, medium, and large, and that'll display when we go into analysis mode. So there's a large scroll bar there, and so forth. Okay, and we also have some improvements to some of the visualizations. Uh, the first one here being the uh, org chart enhancement. So let me go into a larger view of this. It's so basically making it a, a little bit more easier to control and style. So for example, here we have what's called fully expanded mode or auto expand mode. So as I click on the nodes, 
it automatically expands. If I move the nodes around and I want to recenter that, I can click the home button. I can use my wheel on my mouse to zoom and so forth. And we also added some options for uh, changing the border color as well. So if we simply go into edit mode, presentation, you can see card appearance, top bar, border, border color. Okay, so we've added some more improvements for uh, tooltips. So you can customize these tooltips. Now we've added this feature in a previous release where you can add multiple measures to the tooltips. So instead of actually demonstrating this live in analysis mode, let me do this first in edit mode. Underneath the tooltip setting in the properties of the chart, you have your option of using the basic tooltip, and then you can also perform the custom tooltip. Now you have the option to hide basic rows now. So in other words, the default values that are there, if you don't want to see those and you only want to see the customizations, you would check that box. Um, title and description support dynamic formulas and expressions, um, as well as expressions for set analysis, all and total aggregates are also supported. You can put in a longer description as well. And then of course you can add your multiple measures. And just to hover over some, you can see this one says a longer description can go here. We have uh, a custom title and we have multiple measures. Okay, and just a few examples. This one has set analysis being displayed. And then now we also have support for the custom tooltip within line charts. So another way to consolidate and put uh, a lot more information in a more narrow space, if you will. Okay, and just a quick mention. Now, you know we have our visualization bundles where we put our certified extensions, those created by members of the Click community. Uh, we have added what was called a bullet chart. And that was originally within the visualization bundle. Well, now we've added some standard uh, capabilities and features um, to that, such as accessibility, language support, um, some additional customization options. And now the bullet chart is now part of our main chart library. So in short, we improved upon this with additional options and support for standard ClickSense functionality. Uh, it's a good way for presenting KPIs in a clear and informative way. Okay, and I saved the best for last within the visualization enhancements, and that is our new spark lines, which are mini charts, which are included within the cells of a table. And as you can see here, thanks to my colleague, Patrick Nordstrom, who created a nice little demonstration example, Again, this actual app you see me using is also going to be uh, available on demos.click.com as well. Um, but here are some examples of the spark lines. We have our product name, and then these are basically the measures with the additional dimension, in this case, uh, a time period. So let me just show you quickly how to make that. Just gonna create a new sheet very quickly. I'm gonna grab my table object, and we'll just add a dimension for product. And then we'll just add a measure of sales. Okay, now check this out. If you remember in our previous release, you can simply right click on your measure and select duplicate. And here I'm just gonna call this one trend. And then if we scroll down your representation, you have text, you have indicator, and now you have mini chart. And now we get to choose the dimension for that mini chart. So here we're just going to go directly into the editor. And I believe there's one for month. Order date, auto calendar month. And there are our spark lines. And then you could represent this as dots or as bars. And you could even 
create positive and negative values. And just to give you an example of that, let's just go back to the example that was created by Patrick. And you can see the red and the green indicators indicating the positive and negative values in the different styles. So a really awesome addition to the straight table objects. Oh, actually I have one quick example here of another enhancement. So I'm just going to create a quick filter pane by just grabbing category name and holding my shift key. And you can see we have this option here for the filter. Now there's an option here for text alignment. You can turn that off and now we could left center align objects in a filter pane. Okay, and just a quick note on data connectors. So you'll notice if we go into the data manager here, we've now added the Google Analytics data tile as well as the Twitter data tile. Uh, this is basically increasing ease of use for additional connectivity to other cloud-based sources. Um, instead of going into the data load editor and finding those connectors, they are now being made accessible here through the connect to a new data source window. So for the last part of this demonstration video, I'm going to use a brief excerpt from my What's New summary video to discuss what's new in the area of embedded analytics. June 2020 also has added new resources and capabilities to address click embedded analytics, which is sure to be a hit with our developer community. We've created a new resource named the Click Developer Portal. This is the new home for discovering, learning, and referencing APIs for the Click platform. In this initial release, the portal will include API reference documentation for the management of APIs in cloud editions of ClickSense, along with product tutorials available for public consumption. In addition, the developer portal includes references and tutorials for Click's framework agnostic libraries for integrating analytics. Now, something I can't wait to play around with is our new command line interface, known as Click CLI. Click CLI can automate ClickSense as part of your developer operations by enabling IT administrators to script Click Cloud Services administrative workflows into external batch processes. They also can automate moving workloads to the cloud and even interact with application models to validate data, all from a command line interface, something truly exciting for this next generation data analytics platform. Okay, so one more thing that will be in the June release on our software as a service offerings and cloud-based offerings towards the end of June is going to be our new chart monitoring capability. And as described by the presenters, it's a new capability that allows users to monitor their KPIs directly in the Cloud Hub. Gives users the ability to quickly see an overview of what's most important and take action without actually having to go into any of the apps. So depending on whatever apps they've grabbed those charts from, they will be front and center on the home page. And now you can see in this example here, I have a mix of app tiles along with chart tiles. I can choose just to view all charts, just to view all apps. Also, if there's any links available, I can segregate those. But in this case here, if I have all types, I can see the charts and the apps. And just to give you an example of how this works, I'm going to use this uh, visualization app, which has some really good examples of uh, how styled and meaningful our visualizations can be. I'm going to select a sheet. And in here, we have a number of different visualizations that are available. And if I want to keep track of one of these as a key performance indicator, for example, let's say this particular drive time, I'm just going to right click on it and you can see a sub menu will pop up and there's an option to monitor and hub. Now this will also maintain selection. So if I choose to, for example, just choose a particular dimension and I select this customers by drive time and store monitor and hub, it will maintain that particular selection. Here I click monitor. And what that will do is it'll add it to the hub. Here I'll go directly to that hub. And you can see the customers by drive time and store is now available for me to view underneath the charts location. Now when I come into the hub, I can see the latest and greatest data when it refreshes. And if I want to go directly into that, I can view that chart. 
I can see some additional information such as uh, data lineage and location, the selections applied, and then go directly to that chart in the app. Okay, so that's a little quick demonstration on chart monitoring, and this will be available towards the end of June. Okay, so that is all I have for this demonstration. I'd like to leave you with the place where you can learn more. The Click Community is a great resource where many members are on at any moment, at any time, that could answer your questions, including myself and other Click colleagues. So please register and become a member of the Click Community and be able to browse our resources and post your questions. One particular area I would like to enlighten you to is under Click Data Analytics Forums under the Click Sense sub area here. There is a document which I maintain, which links out to numerous helpful resources and uh, quick videos. It is called the New to Click Sense Topics You Need to Know section. By clicking this link here, you'll have a variety of links out to uh, other demonstrations, samples, vignettes, and you know short videos and topics of interest for features, capabilities, and solutions. So take a look at that as well. And then also one of the things I would also like to bring to your attention is uh, I started a new webinar series called Do More with Click for Beginners and Beyond. Um, and that could be referenced over on the Click Design blog right in this area here, and there's a short video message from myself explaining what this new program is about. Uh, we just had one on June 4th, and uh, the next one will be available on June 18th, and we'll be running these uh, twice a month on uh, Thursdays. So look at our webinar programs, stay tuned to the Click community, follow us on social for more information. And as usual, always a pleasure to present to you guys. Take care, and I hope to see you on the next video.